Barbara Streisand's The Way We Were was the number one song in 1974. It was also appropriate for the year Ruckert Terminals was going to experience. Cap Ruckert would pass away on February the 4th, 1974, after 53 years of growing his business from one truck in a warehouse to a multi-million dollar stevedoring and warehousing operation that was the largest privately owned marine terminal in Baltimore. His obituary stated that Helen Bentley, then the chairman of the Federal Maritime Commission, singled out Mr. Ruckert for a special praise when informed of his death. Captain Ruckert contributed more to the growth and development of the Port of Baltimore than any other single person in its history, she said. His sincere devotion and determination to put over new projects, despite all obstacles, will sorely be missed, she added. He was truly a great pioneer. Not long after that, on March 19th, Norman Ruckert Sr. would make a bombshell announcement at the Board of Directors meeting that would threaten Cap's legacy. He had become aware that the local, state, and federal government wanted to build an Interstate 95 highway tunnel under their property at Lazaretto. At the same board meeting, Bud Nixon, Cap's grandson, was made a vice president of the company. Bud and Norm Jr. describe what occurred. There came a time um, when the city and the state wanted to build I-95 oh. and they, they laid out this course for this and the question was a bridge over the river or a tunnel under the river. Oh, let me interrupt you. Yeah. We applied for a building permit for J building, the second half of J building, and they turned it down. Yeah. And we didn't know why. And then... That's why. And then... <laughs> so, um, they, they came and sat down with us and, and showed us these blueprints and drawings and the crossing, the I-95 crossing of the river was underwater, um, which was okay except it went right underneath our terminal mm -hmm. and our piers and our warehouses and so on. So At Lazaretta. Yeah, Lazaretta mm -hmm. Terminal. The Fort McHenry Tunnel was a tipping point in the history of the company. They could take the money and close down or borrow even more and continue to expand. They, they condemned us and we lost the property for a period of almost five years. They gave us $3.1 million. Our, uh, our attorney, Paul Wallman, who was a wonderful fellow, uh, uh, talked to us about maybe we ought to just take the money and go home and get on with our lives. But uh, my dad didn't want to hear any parts of that. So we actually borrowed several million dollars, got a couple of IRBs from the uh, city of Baltimore, I believe, and we bought property up the street, and um, Barbara Mikulski helped us secure some property from uh, the Conrail, and we used this money to expand. The Fort McHenry Tunnel was one of the last parts of I-95 to be built with a budget of $825 million. The tunnel sections were manufactured in nearby Port Deposit and delivered on barges. It was the largest underwater tunnel of its type. From the time Rucker became aware of the Fort McHenry Tunnel Project to the time it was completed, it would take 10 years. So we started expanding in the early 80s and uh, we haven't stopped since then. So it's been, it's been quite a journey. But as we're talking right now, there's probably hundreds of cars driving underneath of the terminal. <laughs>